most of the macabre stories belong to the dark days of medicine, when pronouncing someone dead was a hit or miss kind of science. So you have the story in the 17th century, Marjorie Elphinstone of Scotland gets actually buried. A few hours later, at nighttime, robbers come, they dig her up, and they are going to take the jewelry off her when she groans. And they all go running off into the night in terror, and she sits up, walks home, and outlives her husband. Modern medicine avoids uncertainties of the old days by using five different factors to pronounce someone officially dead. Well, the first thing that we would do is to induce some significant stimuli to see if there's any neurological response. And uh, the way many of us do that is we take something scientific like a car key and we push very hard on the thumb to induce pain. Then we check for a pupillary response, usually using a pen light and see if the pupils react. Then we would take our stethoscope and we would listen for a heartbeat. And usually while listening, we also check for a pulse. And we use the carotid artery. And then finally, we would listen over both sides of the chest for any respirations. So if a patient is not breathing and there's no pulse and there's evidence that the brain is not functioning, then that's the determination of death. Yeah. Are you okay for another seven minutes there, Heineman? feel perfectly fine. It, uh, it's hot. That's the only thing that I don't like. Back at the workshop, Jamie's test run in the sealed casket has lasted nearly 50 minutes. His blood level of carbon dioxide peaked at 3%. 4% is getting dangerous. 10% is lethal. Waking up in a coffin, you know, I surprise, I, I think it would be a pretty scary experience. This stuff is like what gets you. <laughs> you know, it's all, it's a, a, being in a box is one thing, but you got all the all this stuff that's supposed to make it real nice and pleasant, and, and it's actually really kind of creepy, I think. Many of these stories are relatively recent. You have a man in South Africa in 1993 who is pronounced dead after a car accident. He spends two days in some kind of metal casket above ground, at which point he wakes up. And unfortunately, he's not very happy, apparently, because his fiance won't take him back, believing that he's a zombie, come back to get her. So the next step is to load this up on our forklift, lower it down into our makeshift above ground grave, fill it with earth, and monitor Jamie until he begs for mercy. <laughs> the Mythbusters are about to defy nature in an attempt to bury Jamie alive. How you doing? Hey, what the hell are we supposed to do with all this dirt? <laughs> so buried alive, huh? Buried alive. <laughs> You ever heard about anyone being buried alive? Uh, well, I've heard of them. You know, I've seen movies, but I've never really actually seen it happen. Yeah. He's stuck. stuck. Oh, I'm a little apprehensive at the moment. I'm hoping that the box won't collapse, but I think it'll be all right. His dry run lasted 50 minutes. But now, under real conditions, Jamie will be feeling stress, producing more CO2 reducing his survival time. Are you comfy? Ah, oh, yes. You, you deal? Yeah. OK, so you've got your walkie, you got your mic on. That's your emergency oxygen. You have your pulse oxygen meter here, camera, thermometer, humidity sensor. Are you ready, Jamie? Farewell, cruel world. Bye-bye, <laughs> Heine man. With Jamie laid out in his casket, Adam gently lowers him into the chamber. Watch yourself, it's gonna go down. He's about to undergo a rare ordeal. He will be buried alive. <laughs> to match a burial as closely as possible, Jamie's temporary grave will be covered with several tons of earth. Roger that. Are you nervous about it? Over. No, I think I'm fine. It, it uh, definitely had an effect on the casket, though. Loading earth on the steel casket is a calculated risk. It's up to Jamie to make the call. Well, all I got to do is 
got to say is uh, be gentle on those dumps because uh, I'm worried about the lid slipping off of its sides or something like that. Jamie, would you like me to come in and check the lid out? Over. Uh, you're not going to be able to tell anything more than I can uh, at this point. Uh, I'd say just keep going. I wish I had a light in here. He's a trooper, man, I'll tell you. Oxygen levels? Oxygen, he's at 98%. Uh, the medics are watching his vital signs closely. Any indication of acute stress, and he will be exhumed. I imagine my heart's beating a little faster than it was on the test, over. Uh, you'd be correct about that. It's at 95 right now, buddy. You are almost officially completely covered now, Jamie. The casket is getting so warped from the pressure that it's popped up the corners a little bit. Suddenly, the major worry is the very real possibility of Jamie being crushed inside the metal box. Uh, the, the, this thing's really starting to creak, and it's uh, feeling like it's changing its shape. They decide to halt the bobcat. They That's hope the casket can withstand the force He's pressing done. from the above. It's buckling and changing shape on him. Really? Truly. That's the last one we're doing. Because it's, uh, I can feel it coming in. You want out? Yeah. Roger that. We're going to get you out. Pull that back. Put that side. Oh, wow. It will? Yeah, it buckled. Here we go. Just the head. Hey, Jamie. Hey. There he is. Oh. And he's still alive. Did it did it do anything, or is that all my imagination? No, no, no. Oh, it definitely it definitely it was, was crushing down. it in. <laughs> it was just sitting there going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jamie persisted inside the casket for 30 humid minutes, breathing only the available air. I started to panic a little bit there at the end. I mean, uh, it's pretty scary. I mean, I, I don't have any particular fear of enclosed spaces at all, and, uh, and you know, feeling those walls starting to cave in, it, it, it really, uh, really gets you going, I'm, as I'm sure my uh, pulse rate will testify. This is where your pulse started. <laughs> and when the point you asked us to get you out, you were off my chart. Your <laughs> pulse was about 115. Okay. Which shows, I mean, because of your pulse, you were using up a lot more oxygen. So what are the chances of surviving six feet under? I think the myth is sufficiently busted. Uh, I don't think it's possible for someone to survive a couple of hours in the panic state of being buried with their coffin crushing and all of that stuff, let alone a couple of days until they're exhumed and found to be alive. Uh, that's just patently ridiculous to me. Well, there you go. Myth busted.